Hey everybody, welcome back to another Savage Santi video. Today we're talking about the 7000 series GPUs for AMD and how freaking hot they are. Okay, on the hot side, you're more talking the XTX. Um, when I when I owned the XT, I did not see that high of temperatures where it would bother me. The the only GPU between the XT and XTX that gets hot to me is the XTX. The XTX I've seen as high as a hundred and five and 110 celsius and i did not like that now i have only captured 103 on camera and i'll go ahead and show you that now this room is fairly cool it's in a basement it's not quite uh 70 degrees like it is upstairs it is about 60 62 so to be 103 c in this room um that's just insane now I do have a fix for this. We're going to lower those temps, but first let's talk about the new drivers. All right, so AMD launched their new drivers. If I'm going to be honest with you, these drivers should have been, this particular driver should have been the one available at launch. They fixed some issues with virtual super resolution. They fixed some crashes with uh, four displays. They fixed some, some different game performance things. The thing that was the biggest change for me was the improvements to power during hardware accelerated playback. So basically watching YouTube videos or whatever, um, there was increased power draws there. And that's where my game was shutting off in the previous video. I'm just trying to chill, right? I'm just trying to play games and watch somebody on my second monitor. Power goes off because between Valheim and watching YouTube, it was just too much for the system to handle. And yeah, um, I think we have a fix for that as well, too, especially if you're a Valheim player. I can probably help you. Just give me a second here. So these temps were outrageous. Um, they have come down a little bit with the driver change. I'm thinking I'm seeing around 95C, 98. It's not quite the 105, 110C as I saw before. Um, I still think it can get there. It just depends on your environment, your case, probably. Uh, how much airflow do you have? Although airflow does not seem to help this card as much because the overall design of the reference board isn't the best. Now, here's a video I recorded after the driver change. I was trying to, to see what the temps were like. Um, they were definitely they were definitely better during the session. And I wanted to use that to also showcase the, the junction temperature with the changes that I've made. So we got about 83C in this current game. And that's actually in the realm of like pretty comfortable, right? That's not too bad. However, I wanted to showcase that doing the overclocks that we have used, you can drop the temp quite a lot. It's going to vary uh, per game and per, you know, per case, whatever you have going on in your system. But you can lower the temps. In the same game, I was able to lower it about 15 to 20C. So that is huge. I just love seeing that. Now let's go back. I want to show you that even after they've made these changes, the, the card still gets very hot. Now, I just picked up Cyberpunk today. This is with the updated drivers. This is um, me actually playing Cyberpunk for the first time. I'm loving it. I'm just, I just found this spot where I'm like, oh, let me look around and do some tests here real quick. Now, look at that junction temp. 96C. That is really high. For me, that's uncomfortable. I know components can go up to 100, 105, 110 even. But for me, that's just too much. I don't like to see that. I like, to, I like them to be a little cooler because I know that something that generally runs cooler is going to just last longer. You know, I know I have a two-year warranty on this product, but I don't want to have to warranty it, right? So I don't know. For me, the cooler, the better in general. This is our high temp um, stock setting right here and all right so here we go this is that same spot we've just applied the overclock and you can see our junction temp is way lower we're the exact same spot same settings ray tracing is on uh ultra performance is on and we have lowered our temps by quite a lot if you're looking to lower your temps on your graphics card specifically the XTX will have the settings down below. I don't think you have to worry about the XT as much. That card, um, it just seemed to run a bit cooler, which is okay. But you can also underclock that as well. I have a video 
with some settings that might work for you um, just a few videos ago. Check that out on the XT. Um, I did have to sell the 7900 XT to pay for the XTX. And uh, yeah, that went well. I sold it to somebody. They got 100 bucks basically off because the card came with the warranty. I just wanted my money back on the on the main product so I can get this uh, the XTX. Anyway, so this is what I'm currently running now. I've heard some debates whether or not you should keep this at 500 or whether or not you should keep this right up here. I've ran both. It seems to be about the same. I haven't really noticed uh, differences really in the 1% lows or, or anything like that. Like they might, you know, it's, it was, it's within the margin of error, um, at least with what I'm seeing. So you can do whatever works for you. Um, I'm pretty comfortable doing this either way. So I'm kind of testing both ways out, but. So here's what I'm currently running. I'm running 2600 on the minimum, 2700 on the max, 1096 on the voltage. I've got 104 uh, percent on the VRAM overclock. Um, if you want a specific number, it's 2598. You can probably just round it to 2600 if you want. I've seen people go as high as like 2640, uh, 2660. It just depends, you know. Um, and then board power, 15%. So fan curve is adjusted and zero RPM is off, of course. And that's what I'm running. That's how I'm getting these temps. We can go ahead and load into Cyberpunk right now. Validate these tests. Now, if this crashes on you, maybe bump up the, the voltage, the uh, MV up to 1100. I tried 1090 and 1090. Worked in some games and 1090 didn't work in others, so that's why I came up with the 1096. All right, real quick, we have this on. Let's see, let's go for ray tracing ultra. Benchmarking in. This is a pretty intense Ladies scene right here. Jackie will. I finish the cunt. Yeah. Let me pause right here. So I was getting about. 51 frames now the um recording that i'm doing takes about 20 frames i don't know why but it it does i know some people say it takes between like around you know four or five frames but for me even just having obs on takes about 20 frames out of my benchmarks um that it, even if i'm not recording or not streaming it just takes that much i've tried different settings and anything anyway i i have not been able to reduce the the, whatever it's taking away from the system, I've I haven't been able to to really adjust that. So, or adding on what OBS is taking puts us around 66 to 70 frames with ray tracing on, which puts us within where Gamers Nexus also seen their results. They were about like 77 frames with the same settings. Now, now they're seeing they're seeing higher frames because they have uh, better memory and just overall different setup. They uh. You know, if I have a a really good setup, they actually have a great setup. So um, my system's just a hair, basically a hair under theirs or two or whatever. But um, so, yeah, we're without recording and with OBS closed, we're at about 70 FPS for the ray tracing um, on high. Now we can knock this down and go to like ray tracing low and maybe it wouldn't be so bad. Let's go ahead and. See what that does. I ain't left for breakfast. So we're getting an extra. I mean, we're at about 82 right now, so we would be in the hundreds as far as ray tracing low. So that's pretty good. Come on, Jack, stay alive. Pretty good in here. So if we turn ray tracing off. Right about, um, 
60 right here. Okay, 76, 80. That puts us, you know, to add 20, we're at about 100 still. So ray tracing low does not seem to take a lot from the system. Yeah, look at that. The ray tracing low is kind of similar to just um, the ultra settings in general. Now, look at our temp. Our temp is in the 60C. We're not getting anywhere clear, anywhere close to that 95C that we saw earlier from my Cyberpunk video. And I think that's really, really great. All right, now this will be a, I guess a benchmark or a showcasing of like editing with this card because some people do your do use their cards for editing. And you, I know you hear like NVIDIA is better at doing that part. Just like you hear like, uh, you know, PC versus Mac when it comes to editing and stuff like that. Um, I do all my own editing. And if you listen, if you just look at the numbers on the screen, yeah, you do see uh, NVIDIA is better, but but that doesn't necessarily mean that AMD is bad at it. Like, I mean, there's, you know, at some point we're like just splitting hairs. So, I mean, this is editing on the... Welcome back to another Savage Santi video today. That's right. We're talking <laughs> so this is editing on a... An AMD graphics card. And, and this is DaVinci Resolve. Resolve isn't really known as being super AMD friendly. X and the... And the... And the boom. 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 Like that. Today we're talking about the 7000 series GPUs for AMD and how freaking hot they are. Okay. Super hot, by the way, unless you, you undervolt and overclock. So, all right. Uh, on the hot side, you're more talking the X. Boom. So, yeah, there's just a little showcase of editing a video on in DaVinci Resolve on an AMD card. Um, hopefully, if you're nervous about that, don't be, um, you know, it's a combination of everything. It's your CPU, your memory, your, you know, your graphics card, your settings, your file size. It all kind of, um, you know, works together to, to get you your, your results. And with, with all my settings and all my components, editing has never been, you know, I don't know, faster. So I've, I've edited it on both AMD and NVIDIA. And, um, like, yeah, I'm, I'm cool with either one. Like, honestly, like, I think you're good either way, uh, depending on your specs and, and what you're looking for. So, all right, there you go. We've seen the major issue with the AMD boards getting too dang hot. Um, even after the drivers have been updated at the current moment, they're still getting way too hot. But if you do apply that overclock or that, that undervolt, you will see improvements on that. Like I said, those settings will be down below in the description. You know, you've seen me go through some of these problems here and experience them for myself. I believe they've fixed a lot of the voltage issues. Would I buy these cards again? Yes, I would. Okay. I did not mind the XT. The XT did not get nearly as hot and it overclocked. Like there was a lot that we over, uh, there was a lot of performance that we were able to squeeze out of that one. I thought that was really cool. I know pricing aside, um, you know, it's, it, yeah, it should be less. But at the same time, the XTX is not that much, or the 5950 is not that much cheaper. So it's like they're trying not to step on, on those toes, especially for the AIB partners who are still trying to sell 6950s. So if you go too low on the 7900 XT, it's just going to encroach more on the 6950 space. And you could see why they wouldn't want to do that. And now I wish all GPUs, period, were cheaper. I wish everything was, you know, three, four hundred dollars, but. We're not in that world anymore, you know, sadly. Now, the XT, I really liked it because it just didn't get as hot. And it, like I said, and it did overclock well. Um, the XTX, I love its power. Like, even when it's hot, it seems to not even give a shit. Like, it's going to perform very well. Um, I didn't really see it throttling too much or being all cattywampus when it was getting hot. Um, but get, the, the getting hot part does bother me. Like, it's just, it's, it's too much. And I know... And it's just gonna, gonna degrade the the equipment faster. So um, thankfully we can we can knock that down ourselves. So that's cool. I like I said I would not get the reference design 
if I was going to buy an XTX and I had my choice, I would get the Nitro Plus. That's from Sapphire, actually. So they make, like, the best and the worst one, <laughs> coincidentally. Um, or I would get the uh, the Red Devil. I think the Red Devil and the Nitro Plus are probably pretty close to each other. I don't know for sure. But they definitely don't get as hot as this bad boy here. I'm still happy with my purchase. I still wouldn't trade it for a 4080 or a 4090, even though those are really cool and I would love to have one, sure. But at the same time, it's like, man, I I, I don't know. I, I'm just going AMD this time around. Um, I am ultimately happy with my purchase. I am just a little bit peeved that they didn't address the cooling as much as they should have. Even given the size, I think they could have done more to to keep the temps down, not just driver and software wise, but I think the overall design of the reference, um, it probably has room for improvement there and they maybe just saved, you know, whatever, a few bucks or two or whatever, you know, so anyway, love the cards. This video has gone on long enough. I've told you way too much as is. So hopefully you liked it, enjoyed it and got, got some benefits out of it. Um, again, I don't know why OBS is stealing a lot of frames from me. If you know why, hey, let me know. I'm Look, at, in NW2, it takes probably 30 to 50 frames. Okay? But we know that game is, is very generous on giving you frames. Um, in Cyberpunk, it's taking about 20 frames from me. And that still seems high, but I don't, I don't know. Hopefully you like this video. Share it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.